Hey, welcome back to ZK Master Tech. In today's video, we got an 8370R that will not come out of park. What do you guys think it is? customer called us to come out to the field to look at this tractor. It was pulling an auger cart and it was broke down in the middle of the cornfield. Um, he said that the tractor wouldn't come out of park. Um, he said when he tried to put it out of park that it would say that uh, the transmission was calibrating, calibrating in process, and he said it would never finish this calibration. So looking at the tractor, I came out there, I tried to do a forced calibration. It wouldn't try, it wouldn't do anything. The, the address that I changed would always stay at a one and I couldn't get this tractor to calibrate. So we started checking pressures and whenever I checked system two pressure, it was six PSI and it's supposed to be 270 PSI. So at this point I knew I had a major leak inside the transmission, but I didn't have the tooling with me out in the field to get the job done to figure out you know what was causing the major leak which i knew it was most likely the hydro with the codes it was setting so we went ahead and hauled them another tractor put this one on a trailer brought it back here i pushed it pushed it into the shop um, i got the tool that i needed to be able to block off a port um, to check and see if the hydro was the cause of the leak and of course when i installed the tool and started it up my pressure uh, for system two went right where it needed to be so I know the hydro is bad in this transmission. Um, there's also a fix as fail planetary bearing pip on this transmission as well, which is, which is what we're gonna do. Um, so I ordered a hydro for it and the pip kit for the bearing. And now we're going to work on pulling the transmission out. Um, I've already got started on it and hopefully we can get this thing out today. All right, so, so far we got the batteries removed all the electrical connections undone off the back side of the transmission. You got this harness all pulled down, alternator removed. Um, this entire accessory bracket, we're going to put a tool on here that's going to lift this up. Um, we got to put some stands underneath here so we can separate these bolts. And then we're going to roll this whole entire engine assembly forward. Um, took the drive shafts apart on both sides. Um, I got some drain pans underneath. We're draining the oil on it. Um, had to drain the coolant because we've got some uh, couple heater core lines back here I had to undo. Had to discharge the air conditioning because we had to take the AC lines apart right there. So I had to take the exhaust pipe off on the other side and I'll show you that. So we took the exhaust off here discharge air conditioning with the service ports here, the AC machine, undid the coupler for the input shaft, and we'll eventually take these off, but I'm gonna go ahead and work underneath the, uh, the transmission, try to get all the drive shafts and the hydraulic lines undone, and then I'll undo these lube lines because I don't want them dripping down on me while I'm underneath. And then we'll install the stands, and then we'll split this tractor. Okay, so we got stand installed. Comes back, attaches here. Got the rear stand in place. Got the accessory drive lifted up. See that tool better. So now all we got to do is take out these bolts here and split the tractor. Hopefully she comes apart the way I want it to. I want to try to get this separated so this piece doesn't drop down or this piece raise up. I want it to just come apart straight so whenever we go back together it'll be a lot easier. So 
I've got everything unhooked from the back side of the transmission, drive shafts, all the hydraulic lines, the electrical, everything's undone. So now all I gotta do is get these bolts undone and try to get this thing rolled apart. So there she is, the tractor is split. I got this tool on there. It's gonna allow us to pick this thing up with a forklift. And now we just gotta get the bolts undone from the frame so we can pull this transmission this way and then we'll turn it and bring it straight out this direction. fellers there's an IVT now we just need to get all the schmoo cleaned off of this um, get plugs and all the ports we don't want water in I'm gonna take this to the wash bay and clean this off real good and then we'll bring it back in and we're gonna hang this thing on a stand all right so we got the transmission cleaned up we got it put on a stand now we're gonna start the teardown process. see in the time lapse that we pulled this guy out instead of the screen that was in here and that is what I took out and I installed this special tool to go down in this hole and block off that port so we could figure out if the hydro was the source of leakage or not. Gotta get this rear cover off here, this big piece. It's a real heavy piece, and usually it's stuck pretty good. And you gotta use these pry points to try to separate it. got that cover off and I looked down in here and I seen metal chunks and look what we got here these are pieces from the hydro from the piston let's say we found our problem 
I'm sure there's more down in there, but this is all I could dig out at the moment. Severe amount of metal poopies in this thing. So now we're gonna work on pulling all this jazz out of there. Now we're gonna take this retaining ring off so we can remove the tone wheel. Now we're just gonna pick up on this shaft just enough to get this these uh, snap rings off. Now we've got the snap ring off, remove the gear. Got the housing out of the way, we can go ahead and remove the clutch assembly out of the carrier. Now remove the sun drive shaft. Remove the carrier. I decided to remove those springs so they didn't fall down. Now we got the down to the ring gear. We took this snap ring off. We're gonna pull this ring gear out. All right, so we got the ring gear out and it was stuck because there was a lip on this snap ring groove here and we about never got it out. Here's the ring gear. So all that's left is the hydro. And this is the hydro here. And this one unit. And what's broken are these pistons down in here. I'm not sure which side's broken, but once we get this lift it out of there, we'll take a good look at it. You can see this is messing here. It's supposed to look like these. I'm gonna try to rotate this around. See, it's kind of scarred up. Ooh, there's a nasty little battle wound. That one's about ready to come out. The other side. This side don't look too bad. So we're taking this nut off in the CU idler here. All right, now we got the transmission flipped over. We're gonna work on getting this front cover off. Get this piece off. And then we'll be able to check some more gears and the synchronizer in this front cover. Now we got that cover off. Got all the bolts out. Now we just need to take this nut off and then we can pull this cover. Okay, so we got the front cover off. Got it tipped up there because I wanted to take a good look at the gear inside of it. And then here, we're gonna work on taking this synchro out of here. Inspect it.
got the synchro out. What you want to look for is cracking in these little guys. Usually when these fail, this these little pieces in here with the spring will break and be cracked in half. So everything seems to be in good condition on this one. Okay guys, after we inspected this transmission a little further i found that metal has just went through all the gears on the front side of the transmission so instead of trying to find all the individual parts and rebuild this transmission piece by piece which would take forever we're going to go ahead and just put a reman transmission in this tractor um, i'll show you guys some pictures here so you can see what i found and then we're going to put this transmission back together so we can send it off as a core and hopefully our new reman transmission will be here soon.
we got the new transmission in. Had a, it came with a new harness, but I took that off. We're going to reuse the old harness. I had to cut all the zip ties, so I pre-zip tied it, so I'm not fighting that while I'm under the tractor. So we're going to slam this guy in this morning. Transmission is installed. Got all the bolts secured. We still have to torque them, but uh, I got another call, so we're gonna have to put pause on this for now. So um, we'll be back. All right, six hours later, I had to haul this guy back on a semi trailer. Customer was saying that it was making a popping and a cracking noise on the right hand side, and that sometimes it wouldn't move. And uh, I went out and looked at it. And I knew it was probably a final drive, but on this side, I could see that the pinion was leaking. And then I had to move back and forth. And this pinion shaft right here was just walking back and forth. And uh, we had a heck of a time getting this thing on a trailer. And I'm pretty sure we smoked the rest of the teeth on the ring gear in the final drive, just getting this thing on and off. And we actually had to use the auger cart and tractor hooking up a chain to pull this thing onto a detached trailer. And then we haul it back. I had to escort it all the way back, which took like another hour. And now I got the combine off the, the trailer. We got parts ordered for it. And we're just gonna put a pin in this one and revisit that later. So let's get back to the transmission. Three-quarter tech angle, so 361 foot pounds. So the trans is bolted all together, got the all the bolts torqued. Now we got to lower this accessory drive down and connect all that stuff. Should only take, I don't know, six hours. All right, there it is. Got everything hooked up on the back of the transmission. Everything on the side here and the left side. Got the exhaust hooked up. All the accessory drives back together with the belt on. I just gotta put the three point hitch um, hook mount here. And we need to put oil, fill this thing full of oil, get it started. Um, I gotta lift, manually lift the ILS up so I can get this stand out of here and then we'll be putting the hood back on. Okay, we mostly got everything buttoned up. 
Got the hydraulic oil where it needs to be. The only thing I really have left to do is uh, take it out and drive it, recheck it for leaks, and then uh, we're gonna put the front weights on and the front fenders on and the shields on the bottom, but I left that stuff off because I wanna be able to check for leaks. So here's the first time this thing's moved. And we're moving. We got a lot of water, got a lot of rain. The harvest is kind of on pause right now. It allows us to get some of the shop projects done. But everything seems to be working fine, running smooth. stacked on and then we can put the fenders on. All right, we're going to take this thing out on the road. Run her through the paces. Now that we got the oil all circulated and everything, we're gonna go ahead and change the hydraulic filter. So we got one filter on this tractor that filters all the hydraulic and the transmission oil. So we're gonna go ahead and change this out and then top off the oil, and then we're gonna be done with this tractor. that's going to do it for today's video i appreciate you guys thanks for watching hit that like button smash the subscribe button and keep that green iron moving